how do you get better at mathematics in two weeks? That's what we're going to discuss in this video. I'm going to give you a list of things you can do in order to get better at mathematics as quickly as possible. So this video is inspired by a very short email that I received from a subscriber here on the channel very, very recently. So I'm going to start this video by taking a quick look at that email and then doing my best to answer this question. You can get really good at mathematics really quickly. So let's get started right away. So the person's name, uh, I will leave out of it. And the subject is, I want to become good at math. Hi there, math sorcerer. My name is... And then he says his name. I've discovered your channel from a video recommended to me titled, It Only Takes Two Weeks. Apparently, you claimed that it only takes a few weeks to become good at math, and that really caught my attention. In recent years, I've noticed a decline in my grades and a sharp decline in my math skills. So I want you to recommend me some ideas or how to become good at math like maybe some books or study habits that I can learn. I personally don't hate math. In fact, I'm a chess player. I fell in love with chess since I was a kid. And the one of the big reasons why is because I loved puzzle solving. Cool. I'm curious to know how to become good at math and how to solve math problems. Anyways, I think I'm done writing this message. Thank you in advance and take care. And then he, he signs his his name. So he's referring to a video I made called It Only Takes Two Weeks, where I talked about um, a professor who uh, I overheard make that comment. And, you know, it took me years to come to the realization that, yeah, you can learn a, a great deal of mathematics in, in a very, very short amount of time. So the first thing you have to do in order to you know learn math quickly, obviously, is to do it every day, right? You want to practice every single day. So Consistency uh, is key. And every time you do a math problem, you're reinforcing things you've already seen before. So for example, say you do some math today, say you do some algebra, and then tomorrow you do more algebra. Good chance that the math you do tomorrow might use some of the stuff you learned today because you're, you're building on what you've learned, right? So it's it builds like a foundation, which leads me to my next comment, which is you want to master the basics, okay? So super, super important to focus on the basic stuff. So a lot of times people will get hung up on things and it's only because they're lacking some like core fundamental concept. There's some thing they're missing. And the problem is a lot of times they don't know what that thing is, right? And you really, really can't find what that thing is until you like try to recognize your mistakes. You know, you say, hey, why can't I solve this? What, what, what is holding me up? For example, in calculus, one of the things that people get held up with is the algebra, right? Algebra is tough. And the algebra skills you use in calculus can be you know, a little bit harder than the algebra skills that you use in algebra. One of the most important things you have to do in order to learn math in a short period of time is to make sure that you solve the problems independently. So what I mean by that is you want to be able to do math cold, no books, no internet, no resources, cold, just you and a piece of paper or a whiteboard or, you know, a, a pen or a pencil, whatever you prefer, and just sit down and do it, right? That's how you get better. And if you look at your notes, no good, right? You need to be able to do stuff independently. If you're in a classroom setting, by the way, and you're trying to improve your grades, this is huge because a big portion of people's grades in a college setting or even high school settings comes from exams, right? And in an exam setting, typically you don't have any resources. So super important that you're able to solve things by yourself without using any resources, super, super key. It's very important that you're able to do that. Once you're able to do that, you're going to be able to do math on your own, which means you're going to be able to succeed on the test. This is like the number one reason, by the way, that people sometimes fail math classes. You know, I, I taught a lot of math classes and I've had a lot of students fail that first test in whether it be college algebra, calculus, statistics, trig. I've taught a ton of classes and I've seen people fail in all of them, right? And like 90% of the time, what happens is 
those people will come see me and they'll say, hey, you know, I didn't do well on the test. What can I do? And I'll just emphasize that they have to be able to do everything cold like when they're studying because they'll do all the homework, right? They'll get, you know, you can sit down and do hundreds of problems, right? But if you're looking at your notes and you're using resources the entire time, you're not really learning as effectively as you can be. When you, when you can do things cold, when you can do things without looking at your notes, that's how you know you're a master because you can walk into a classroom, any classroom, any math classroom, if you know the material, you can take a test and you can say, yeah, look at that. I can prove all these problems. I can prove all of this stuff. You know, real analysis, I got this. After I got it all, calculus, whatever. You could do it, right? Why? Because you trained yourself on your own to do it cold. And that's how you learn mathematics super, super fast. For more complex problems, you want to also break them down into smaller steps. So if you're doing more advanced mathematics, the number of problems you're going to be solving per day is going to go down, right? So if, if, if you're in an algebra class, you, you have some homework and you might have 10, 20, 30 problems in that homework set. Maybe in calculus, you might have 10 or 15 per section. It all depends on the class, but when you get to higher level math, you have a lot less problems assigned to you because the problems are so hard and they take so much time to figure out. So you'll be doing less math if you're doing harder math. And this kind of makes it hard, um, but at the same time, you know, there's less problems that you have to contend with at that level in some sense. There's a different variety of problems and the problems are more complex. So when you encounter these complex problems, you know, you have less problems, but they're harder and longer. You do have to try to break them down. You know, you read the question and your first step is, what is the question even asking? You have to understand what the question is asking, you know? And this can take you a very long time. I once spent like four hours trying to figure out a certain statement. It said, fix S naught and S. And I was like, what does that mean? And I remember I spent, I was on IRC years ago uh, in a chat room talking to someone and this guy's trying to explain it to me. And he was, you know, he was a really good guy trying to do his best. And I just couldn't get it, right? So understanding the problem is key. Once you understand the question, then you say, okay, what's your assumption? You know, if you're trying to prove something, what is your hypothesis? And then you write down what that means. Then you got to think about where you're going. And then, so you got to really break it down and break it down in steps and, and analyze every little piece of the problem. You know, what do you have and what are you trying to show? And then Think about the implications and the knowledge you know surrounding the theory that is being discussed in the problem. I know I talked about doing things cold, but when you're learning, you are allowed to use resources. In fact, if you don't have resources, it's kind of hard to learn, right? Unless you're Ramanujan who had one book and I don't know how he was able to learn math, but most of us, you know, we have to have books. That's why I have so many books, right? I have thousands of books because I've been collecting for decades, a long time, right? because math is hard. And whenever I tried to learn a subject, I would gather as many books as possible. So that's what you should do too, right? Try to get as many books as you can get your hands on. Um, there's videos on the internet. I have videos here on my channel. I have courses, by the way, use the links in my description or from my website, mathsorcerer.com. So I've got courses in algebra, calculus, tons of stuff. So that's another option um, that you can do. The good thing about courses, whether it be my courses or someone else's courses, is that a course in general, a college course, any type of course is going to have structure, right? Even if it's a bad course, it's going to have structure. And if that structure is good and, you know, the problems are solved correctly and the math is correct, that's pretty good. And that's going to help you learn a lot of math. And it's going to give you the structure you need to, to learn mathematics. Push yourself. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself when, when you're learning math. So even though you're trying to learn math in a short period of time, don't run away from the hard problems, right? That's where champions are made, right? Do the hard stuff. That's what makes you stronger. So focus on you know, the regular material, but take some time to focus on some ch extra challenging problems. You know, those, those problems in the back of the book with the star, at least read the question think about them. And if you're in a time crunch, I know you can't spend too much time on those really hard problems. You got to really focus on the core of the material, which is like the easy medium type problems. But it does help to push yourself because it helps take your thinking to the next level. If you have friends or if you have some type of place where you can go and talk to people about math or friends who do math, that could be a helpful way to learn math when you know, you're just tired of working on your own. Teaching others is a great way 
to learn mathematics. And it's the reason that teachers sometimes, they seem like these gods, like these math gods, like, wow, how does the teacher know so much? They're a super genius. The teacher is not a super genius, right? It's just because the teacher teaches the material. I'm not a super genius, right? It's because you teach. And even teachers who teach really hard classes, I mean, yes, they're smart people, but like, when you do it every day, when you teach it, you become so much better. Uh, you know, as a concrete example, even myself, when, when, I, when I first taught algebra and then moved up to calculus, teaching calculus is very, very different from taking calculus, right? When, when you're on, a, on the board and you have to explain, you know, what a derivative is, you have to derive it from scratch, you know, or when you have to explain the mean value theorem, you know, improve it, or, you know, these are things that make you incredibly strong, right? Incredibly strong. You have to explain Newton's method and how it works and, you know, visualize it and derive the formula. That makes you better at mathematics. That gives you the ability to read math books and just understand them, right? That's where you want to get. And so teaching helps you get there because it's like, it's like another level of understanding, you know? You have like the student's understanding and then you have you know, the teacher's understanding. And for some reason, I'm thinking of like Kung Fu, you know, grasshopper. But that's the idea, right? So as a student, right, as, as a pupil, you, you learn from someone who is better than you. And then eventually you can become as good as, you know, the master, as the sensei. You can become better than your teacher, which is in some sense like a math sensei, right? You can get to that level. You can. And teaching is one way to get to that level because that's how the teacher, got, that's how, the math master, the teacher, who you think is, you know, some math god, how did they get to that level? By teaching, because that's what took them to the next level. So makes a big deal bigger than most people think. Focus on understanding, not just memorization. Um, really key to try to understand why things work. Now, for many people, it's a little bit backwards, the statement. For many people, I think they should focus on memorization. You might say, well, why? Shouldn't you understand? Well, here's the thing. Sometimes it takes too much time to try to understand everything. So if you're trying to learn math really quickly, you are going to have to memorize some things and just accept them, especially if you're doing advanced math. You know, you know it's, it's kind of hard to go back and reprove everything. As a concrete example, um, I had to teach myself field theory because I didn't know any field theory. I didn't learn it as an undergrad. And when I got to grad school, um, I used books, you know, I self-studied, and I taught myself field theory. So I, went, I actually went back and reproved all the stuff, starting with polynomials, then worked my way up through field theory, and eventually got to Galois theory and stuff. But it's hard, right? It takes time, it takes effort, and it's not something that you need to do. Sometimes it's better to just memorize those things so that you can push forward. Another example where memorization is really important is in trigonometry. You know, it's so important to memorize you know, the trig function values of those special angles. You know, the sine of pi over three is the square root of three over two. That's something you should know, right? Just memorize it. And things like that, I think I've seen people resist memorizing. So it's important to also focus on memorization. So I, I would maybe rephrase my statement, focus on both understanding when you have the time and memorization when it's necessary. Stay positive and persistent. It's very, very key. And it goes back to the first point, which was to practice daily, right? So you gotta be positive about it. You gotta be persistent. A positive attitude makes all the difference. If you go into something with a positive attitude, chances are you're going to do better than if you go in with a negative attitude. It's not gonna like, you know, make everything perfect and make math easy, but I've seen it. A concrete example is the first day of class, right? Or the first two weeks of class in any math class. The energy is usually very high. People are motivated. They wanna do really well in that first test. After that first test, a lot of people are kind of run down, right? They've had a first test, you know, in my class and other classes. So they're kind of run down and the, the enthusiasm starts to wane. If you pick up a used math book, you'll notice a lot of times there's a lot of writing at the beginning of the books and then the writing kind of just goes away. Why? People are more motivated at the beginning. So try to remember that, okay? And try to maintain that positivity even when you're down, right? So like, you know, even midway or at the end of the semester when you're preparing for that final, go into it with a positive attitude. You know, you're studying for that final exam. You're, 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 you're preparing, right? You're, you're learning everything. It's kind of like, this is it. You just have to learn everything and go in there and just rock that test. Um, 
So yeah, so get better in two weeks. Hopefully after watching this video, you have some tips on how you can get better at mathematics quickly and in an efficient way. Do you have advice for people watching this video? If you do, leave a comment in the comment section below. Remember, when you leave comments, it helps other people who are watching these videos because people read the comments and honestly, learning math is hard. It takes more than two weeks really to learn math, but you can learn a lot in two weeks, right? You can learn, you'd be surprised how much mathematics you can learn in a short period of time if you do it every day, you know, and, and consistently. How much you learn will depend on how much time you spend, right? If, if you spend, you know, an hour a day, yeah, that's pretty good. If you're able to spend several hours a day, you're gonna learn an incredible amount of mathematics, but it, it, it takes an incredible amount of effort to spend several hours every day. I, most people, you know, you can't do math for like four or five hours every day. You know, it takes it takes a lot to get to that level of dedication and discipline. So start start small and, and work your way up. If you found this content helpful or valuable, feel free to like, subscribe, and all of that stuff. Share. Check out my other channel, The Internet Sorcerer. Check out my channel in Spanish, Math Sorcerer Español. Check out my eBay store. Link is in the description. You can pick up some math books there. Um, so yeah, until next time. Keep doing mathematics.